Now at six. Cool and raw tomorrow with a few scattered showers and then a warm up by week's end. And there's breaking news. An FBI raid at the office of President Donald Trump's attorney. What investigators seized. Then, new details about how Brandeis University handled complaints against a now fired basketball coach. Also, Mount Ida students and parents looking for answers after the school announces its closing. Another school and a state leader stepping in to help. Plus, a wild wreck in Lawrence. An alleged drunk driver slams into a convenience store and ready to run. It's going to be tough for her, but I'm pumped, so we'll do it. let's do it. A local couple pushing the limits one week before the Boston Marathon. 7 News at 6 starts now. First at six, breaking news. The FBI raiding the office of President Donald Trump's longtime personal attorney. Authorities reportedly seizing documents related to the adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Cohen's attorneys responding to that raid tonight. Let's get to Tim Caputo live in our newsroom with the latest on what we know. Tim. Adam Kim, federal agents with search warrants in hand took documents from Michael Cohen's New York City office earlier today. Cohen's attorney confirms the raid, saying it's in part related to special counsel Robert Mueller's expansive investigation into the Russian meddling of the 2016 presidential election. According to The New York Times, though, investigators have seized emails, tax documents, and even business documents related to several topics, including payments to an adult film star that came from the office of Michael Cohen. Cohen recently admitted to paying $130,000 to Stormy Daniels, an adult film star who said she had an affair with President Trump about a decade ago. The payment to Daniels just one of many topics being investigated by federal agents. The Times reporting that those seized records include communications between President Trump and Cohen. Cohen's defense lawyer calling today's search inappropriate and in a statement says in part, the decision by the U.S. Attorney's Office in New York to conduct their investigation using search warrants is completely inappropriate and unnecessary. It resulted in the unnecessary seizure of protected attorney-client communications between a lawyer and his clients. Just last week, President Trump was asked about the alleged hush money paid to Daniels, and he denied knowing anything about it, saying, quote, you'll have to ask Michael Cohen. So far, Cohen and President Trump have not commented on today's FBI raid. Live in the newsroom, Tim Caputo, 7 News. Breaking now out of Marlboro, police are investigating allegations of inappropriate conduct between a teacher at the Kane Elementary School and a student. The school says it uh, contacted police and put the teacher on leave right away. The school is not releasing any more information other than that, though. Uh, administrators are saying they will cooperate with the police investigation. And there's also breaking news from the Red Sox. The team announcing Xander Bogarts is headed to the disabled list. So how long will the shortstop have to sit out? Big question. Let's get the answer or try to get closer to it. Here's Joe Emerson with more. Joe. Xander Bogarts, the Red Sox most productive offensive player so far, has a broken bone in his left ankle. He has been placed on the 10-day disabled list. The Red Sox hoping to get him back in 10 to 14 days. Bogart suffered a small crack in that left ankle in the seventh inning of yesterday's comeback win over the Rays when he went sliding into the Tampa Bay dugout while chasing down a ball. The injury is non-displaced and will not require surgery. Bogart's through nine games is leading the Red Sox with a 368 batting average, two home runs, and nine RBIs. The Sox losing Bogart's just as the Yankees are arriving in town to start up a three-game set tomorrow night, marking their first real test this season. Reporting live in the newsroom, Joe Amrosino, 7 News. 7 News now focusing on the forecast. It's sunny out there, but still a chill in the air in Boston today. The good news is we are expecting a midweek warm-up. Let's get details from JR. Right now, with that sunshine, temps only into the 40s today. We Those numbers coming up in a few minutes. Also on 7, prosecutors say a police impersonator was caught in the act. Authorities in Lynn saying a man was pulling people over, pretending to be an officer, and then stealing their money and belongings. 7 Sharm Saketi is live in Lynn with more information. And Kim, I spoke with a woman who says Alvarez pulled her over. She says she's glad she got away and is around to talk about it. And Alvarez's lawyer declined to speak with us on camera, but did say his client is in need of a mental health evaluation. Right now, he's being held without bail. We're live in Lynn. Sharman Sakedi, 7 News. Now to an interview you will see on Just One Station. An SUV makes a smashing entrance at a 7-Eleven store up in Lawrence. A suspected drunk driver behind the wheel, police say. And tonight, we're hearing from the woman you saw in that video who was just, like, that close as the SUV came barreling through. Let's get to Steve Cooper 
More on the interview you will only see here. Steve? Adam, after a day of delays, the suspect finally appeared in court here late this afternoon in Lawrence District Court. But tonight, a woman who basically cheated death is speaking out. Well, Cruz knows she's lucky to be alive tonight. She says her prayers and thoughts right now are with her friend who remains in the hospital tonight. As for the suspect, he was ordered to undergo a psychiatric evaluation by the judge and is due back here in court next month. We're live in Lawrence tonight. Steve Cooper, 7 News. New at 6, Brandeis University meeting with community members today, talking about the school's response to discrimination complaints against the men's head basketball coach. That coach was fired last week. Seven's Nathalie Pozo is live in Waltham with the update. Well, Kim, the board of trustees and school officials, including the university president, heard from students and staff today and even responded to some of their concerns. That meeting that lasted about an hour and a half just wrapped up here a short time ago. Now, some of the concerns addressed today is how the university will handle complaints in the future, while others express their concern for a lack of transparency surrounding the Brandeis University men's basketball head coach. Last year, several students filed a serious discrimination complaints alleging preferential and discriminatory treatment on professional behavior and racially boasted harassment. Now, disciplinary action was taken at the time, but last week a new person filed a complaint against the coach leading to a new investigation which resulted in the firing of that coach. One student I spoke to here today tells me she's experienced racism here on campus and that the university needs to stop talking about it and take action. The words is not mar it's not lining up with the work, and I need the work to happen. I would like for there to be direct action. I think that we not we need to stop telling people that we're in a university that commits ourselves to social justice because that's not the truth. And I just spoke with the university president a few minutes ago. He tells me they have hired an outside independent group to look into these allegations and the overall culture of the university. He says he takes these complaints very seriously. We're live in Waltham. Nathalie Pozo, 7 News. Students and parents are now looking for answers days after Mount Ida College announced it was shutting its doors for good. Today, they met with school administrators to sort of discuss the next steps, and there are many. And for some students, there's a lot to figure out. Kimberly Bookman, live in Newton with the story for us here at 6 o'clock. Kimberly? Yeah, Adam, Mount Ida struck a deal with UMass Dartmouth, so it's trying to transfer students from here to there, but some say it may not be a fit for everyone. And now Newberry College in Brookline is stepping up, saying that it will accept students from Mount Ida, and that college is just down the road. In Newton, Kimberly Bookman, 7 News. And there's more coming up on 7 News. Pushing for a purpose. A week before the Boston Marathon, one local couple finishes the race their own way. And ahead on 7 News at 6.30, she survived the Boston Marathon bombing. Now she's ready to race again thanks to new prosthetic leg. Then a topless protester charges at comedian Bill Cosby right outside his sexual assault retrial, her connection to the comedian's hit show. And a beautiful day for baseball? What do you think? Maybe not. Heavy snow postpones the Chicago Cubs home opener. We'll be back.